so uh, i'll start my talk with a lighter note um, they say you know you can find out if the other person is from bangalore if you ask him how far a place is he'll reply back in units of time rather than units of distance right if you say how far is malishwar from here he'll say it's 25 minutes away rather than saying 5 kilometers away right so uh, bangalore and traffic go hand in hand and traffic is in uh, everybody's lips uh, now my talk is divided into five parts i'll be explaining to you um, how bangalore is how traffic moves what are the challenges um, how we are leveraging technology what are the outcomes and what future plans we have for bangalore traffic my entire talk will be on how we are leveraging cutting edge technology to take the traffic challenges of bangalore head on can anyone tell me this is 12 million can tell me tell me what this indicates in particularly related to traffic yeah this is the number of uh, vehicles in bangalore city registered in bangalore city we have 12 million vehicles for a population of 14 million incidentally we are the largest number of private vehicles in india we overtook delhi in 2024 and um, if you take the vehicle to human population for every registered uh, vehicle per 1000 population bangalore is at 852 we are almost one is to one whereas hyderabad is at 744 chennai is at 539 international city is like london paris um are uh, anywhere between 250 to 400 the annual population growth rate of bangalore in the last 4 years has been 4% whereas the annual car growth rate has been 8% in the last 10 years we had we exactly doubled our vehicle population it was 56 lakhs in 2013 it is 1.12 crores in 2023 and today it's 1.2 crores or 12 million this is shows the scale at which we are trying to manage bangalore traffic just to give you a snapshot of bangalore bangalore has a, a road network of 14000 kilometers we have 44000 intersections we have uh, 467 signalized junctions we have uh, 600 man junctions we have more traffic junctions and signals than the rest of the state put together right so we are like managing an entire state so i just want to give you the scope of operations in bangalore city right now the challenges that we are facing here is that we have an average speed of 18 kilometers per hour according to the world traffic index we are the sixth most congested city in the world we are the most congested city in india this is coupled with a high fatality rate and high accident rate we report about 5000 uh, car crashes in a year of which 800 to 900 are fatal so we and the amount of violations is that last year we collected 184 crores in fines alone right so we have this twin challenge of slow speeds and high fatality rates therefore the philosophy is that the conventional methods of traffic management are simply not enough we need to leverage technology we have a traffic police strength of 5700 personnel this is simply inadequate to uh, manage traffic with the kind of scale and scope that it has so what we believe is that technology is a enabler it acts as a force multiplier and augments our capacity and we intend to harmonize human effort with technological advancements we don't intend to replace humans with technology we intend to aid humans and human endeavor with the use of latest cutting edge technologies to that end what are we doing in bangalore in bangalore what we are trying to do is we take the latest cutting edge technology by way of artificial intelligence um real time traffic monitoring congestion modeling data science is big data then we collaborate with other data ecosystems of government agencies other private agencies what we try to do is that we try to get better situational awareness and actionable insights and then take data driven decisions so far it has been ad hoc or on gut feeling but we wanted to use scientific methods to our decisions so the entire gamut of operations is to do and go for data driven decisions so i'll be talking to you about six technologies which we are using in bangalore three pertaining to traffic management three pertaining to road safety in traffic management of the first technology that we use and which we are proud of is something called as the astram technology it is a big data platform astram stands for actionable intelligence for sustainable traffic management it is a ai driven big data platform which collates and collects information from multiple sources analyzes them gives us actionable insights and helps us take decisions 
and response management and helps in dissemination of information on multiple platforms, including the public. So what we do in Astram? In Astram, we have basically the Mac-based engine, which is analyzing the congestion. We have dashboards, which are analyzing the travel time, tra congestion, congestion lengths, accidents, fatalities. The corridor level analysis is being done. This is being reported upon in real time by our 5,700 staff using a reporting bot. They report on real time traffic conditions by way of accidents, roadblocks, congestion, water logging, tree fall, procession, protests, anything which affects traffic is report, being reported in life. This is then analyzed and through APIs, we are able to give it to map based services, we are able to give it to mobility services in real time as well as in public in various platforms like media, social media and the FM radio. So Astrum's big data platform takes data from all these sources. On the left hand side, we have data from cab aggregators, we have data from corporate travel service providers, we have travel data from travel data aggregators as well as from map based services. And internally, we have data from our ITMS cameras, our 7500 surveillance cameras, from our social media feeds, from our accident database. So you can understand the gamut of operations and number crunching that we are doing to come to this analysis. This data helps us basically to take good important decisions and helps our policing to be proactive rather than reactive. Two things which affect Bangalore traffic on a large scale basis are planned infrastructure developments like a white topping work or a new metro line. The other thing which affects are planned events by way of social, political, cultural, etc. For example, a cricket match in Chinnaswamy Stadium affects the CBD area. Right? So all this data is collected and we are able to give our response and manage the traffic, assess the impact of how that event would pan out, how a blockage of road or a reduction in road width will affect traffic and what alternative mechanisms we can give. So in terms of dashboards, alerts and analytics, uh, this is the kind of dashboards we have. We have on congestion, travel time, accidents. This is the kind of data we see at the back end to make, help us understand graphically and pictorially how traffic is moving in this uh, city and how road safety is being affected. To give an example how Hathram helped us, on August 14th was a long Independence Day weekend where we expected a huge exodus of people outside Bangalore. We expected rain also. And we were able to take some decisions. So what are the decisions that we take? One is diversion, blockages. On that day, we went to the highest gradation of advisory, uh, action we can take, we issued advisory for all the tech companies to go work from home. They did do so. On the top are two graphs. Uh, on the left hand side of the graph, top graph, is uh, what was predicted and right hand side because of the actions what happened. On the bottom is a graph which will, uh, the one in orange is what was predicted and one in blue is what happened due to the mitigation efforts we took. So this is the kind of uh, analysis and insights we are getting and then taking action to reduce congestion in Bangalore. The second technology that we are using is something called as the Bangalore Adaptive Traffic Control System. Basically, it's been implemented in 66 junctions so far, and it'll be implemented at 165 junctions by the end of January. What is an adaptive signal? An adaptive signal is basically one which the signal time changes according to the traffic volume at that junction. So if an arm of a junction has more traffic load, we give it more preference. So what are we doing? We are using a technology called COSICOST. It basically uses computer vision and radar to understand what is the traffic load in each arm and it allocates signal time accordingly. And we can synchronize two corridors as well. Now some early results that we have got out of this, uh, in KR Road, we have been able to decrease travel time by 20% and increase throughput by 22%. In Hudson Circle, we have been able to decrease travel by 30%. You can see the graph on the bottom, uh, what it was before and what it is now and during a peak hour. And in Jainagar, about 20% decrease in travel time and about 18% increase in throughput. So this is the kind of technology we are using and we are moving towards to enhance the traffic flow and optimize the signal timings to reduce travel times. The third uh, technology we are using is called Wanki or Visual Aerial Network for Knowledgeable Insights. It's a very fancy name for drones. So we are using drones during morning and evening peak hours. We are using 10 drones on important junctions and corridors. The data is fed live to our traffic management center. 
in real time ai is analyzing any impediments to traffic like uh, illegal parking vehicle off road accident procession protest whatever anything which impedes the flow of traffic so we get a birds eye view of important corridors and junctions in bangalore so these are the three technology we use for uh, traffic management we are using other three technology for road safety now what is there in road safety there are four e's to road safety engineering enforcement emergency services and education we had don't have much say in uh, uh, engineering but we do have some technologies in the other three so in enforcement we started using something called as the itms intelligent traffic enforcement management system what this does it crowd sources data from multiple sources our 7500 cameras dashboards body worn cameras of uh, traffic police the mobile phones as well as other data from uh, public and we are able to generate violations automatically using ai we generate seven types of violations which are shown here red light violation no helmet no seat belt triple riding driver on call etc now why we chose these seven violations these seven violations are the highest contributors to fatalities and injuries in bangalore so we thought more than having people stop being stopped by traffic police let us use lev and leverage technology to enhance our violation detection systems incidentally this is available in 200 and junctions in bangalore city right now it generates more than the entire police force of bangalore city right and it's works 24 by 7 doesn't get tired and like humans the whole idea has been that we should go towards a contactless enforcement system where technology is leveraged and we detect violations in 2014 the we were at 35% in terms of contactless this year we are at 95% right and this is what we are going towards i i feel in next couple of years we will be at 99% contactless enforcement and contact enforcement would reduce to offenses which require our interventions like drink and drive for example in terms of emergency services we have developed this app called epath this epath is a app used by all uh, ambulance operators they click on the it's a very simple to use they click on it they so the start and destination they click on priority if it is of a high priority we give it clearance we locate the gps we track the gps of the ambulance and the app and at junctions we give it clearance in case an ambulance is stuck for any reason for more than 1 minute automatic alert is generated and we ensure that the ambulance moves so this has been used by about 1000 ambulance operators every day we are giving about 80 to 88 uh, priority uh, trips for ambulances and in 22 instances we gave green corridors for ambulances i just hope we can see this video kasturba road ambedkar vidhi road trinity junction lavel road vittal malya road and rupatunga road for parking the locations are ub city parking lot bmtc ttmc shivajinagar first floor and kings road inside kaban park pick up and drop off zones for cabs and autos are on kaban road between brv junction and cto circle public are requested to cooperate for more such information follow bengaluru traffic police right this entire video is ai generated including my voice my voice my video the infographics right we just fed the plain text into this ai engine and it generated this video so why are we doing this the whole idea is to make it more relatable to the present generation everybody is on social media let us leverage that instead of giving a drab press note we'll give a nice video it's more transmittable people like it they share it again it's dissemination of information so this entire video is ai generated we just started this on october 3rd and we have done about 5 6 videos and um, there's no human intervention i just type the text onto the ai chatbot it generates the video for me right so this is how we are leveraging technology for education and awareness so what are the future plans we have uh, three things that i'm proud of that i'd like to share with you we are going to go for a completely made in india signal uh, the entire hardware software algorithm and data is going to be made in india previously we were dependent on multinational companies to provide us this data today we are collaborating with small companies across india to generate this mobility data this mobility data is going to be used for the future generation of signals it is already been tested in two locations working fine we hope that we can have this across bangalore shortly the second thing we are using llm based chatbots uh, for call takers to assist call takers bangalore is a cosmopolitan city right we are people of speaking of all languages so what happens if a person calls 112 and he's not able to understand what the other person is saying right 
So what LLM chatbot does for all Indian languages, it translates into a language that is known by the call taker, and what the call taker speaks is translated back into the language known by the caller, right? So we want to be able to attend to each and every person regardless of the language he speaks in Bangalore. So the pilot is going on, I'm hopeful in a couple of months we'll launch this as well. For all Indian languages, all languages across the world. The third thing is the digital mobility twin. The digital mobility twin is basically a digital representation of Bangalore city and the traffic flows. We intend to do simulation and modeling and use this before we can implement it on the ground. Say we have a one way, we want to know is it working? What if I reverse the one way? What if I make it into a two way? So instead of practically do it on the ground, we first implement it here, see, understand what it does, and then translate it onto the ground. Now, the uh, the thing about Digital Mobility Twin is that it gives us flexibility and it is scalable to any city, right? So we can then scale it up to Karnataka, whatnot. So these are things that we have in plan. It's in the next three to four months, we should be able to implement this. So to sum it up, in Bangalore, we at BTP are committed to using technology in a smart, safe and scalable way. We want to collaborate with all stakeholders to meet the traffic challenges and to transform, transform urban mobility. And uh, we at BTP are committed to ensuring that Bangalore remains a safe and livable city. Thank you so much for your attention.